Well, we are gathered on this national holiday once again. <laughs> we have gathered on this day of the Super Bowl. And for many of us, we have primed our pumps, we have uh, marinated our steaks, we have uh, seasoned our short ribs, we have done everything getting ready for our Super Bowl parties. Today is Super Bowl 52, and it is, if you have uh, been in any part of the United States, you know that it is a game between the Philadelphia Eagles versus Tom Brady. <laughs> Because in the news, that's all you've been hearing is about Tom Brady. Now, for those of you that do not appreciate the finer uh, nuances of football, there are other parties out there for you. Uh, my daughter, I was talking to my daughter yesterday, and she is going to a superb, whoa, where did we go here? Whoa, here we go. Superb owl party if you can it's just look at it for a second I don't need to explain it superb owl party all, ser all uh, kidding aside with uh, what is uh, going on today um, there is some serious matters which um, Marlene has touched upon um, two things about this day that we should recognize. One is that it is a very high uh, day for human trafficking, especially around the city of the Super Bowl, which is Minneapolis. But the other thing that I am very cognizant of is that it is one of the highest days for spousal abuse in our country, if you did not know that. And that's because of what is involved usually in watching a Super Bowl with friends and uh, usually there is alcohol involved and that usually fuels things that are unfortunate. So we need to pay attention to that as a church if you don't always uh, pay attention to that. And uh, it's something that we need to be very cognizant of. Our scripture lesson today is from the Gospel of John and if you have not known it, I've been preaching uh, from the Gospel of, or excuse me, the Gospel of Mark, excuse me, um, uh, because uh, this is the Gospel uh, that is part of our lectionary. And uh, for those of you that don't know that much about the lectionary, it is a series of readings throughout the year that many of us choose to preach on each Sunday, off and on. I choose to preach on it probably about maybe two-thirds of the year, and then the other third I do sermon series. So right now I'm in the lectionary, and the gospel uh, readings come out of the gospel of Mark. And if you don't know anything about the season of Epiphany, uh, the season of Epiphany is simply that, that time in which we... we uh, see the revelation of Christ in the world through his life and through his acts and his, his teachings. Um, and we uh, celebrate Epiphany as kind of the precursor to this next season, which is the season of Lent, and that is the season of sacrifice for us. But we begin with our um, scripture lesson today, which comes to us from the first chapter of Mark, and it is the story of uh, Simon's mother-in-law being sick. And it is also the story of Jesus coming to Simon's mother-in-law and healing her from her fever. And as we see in the story that is presented before us, that immediately after uh, Simon's mother-in-law was healed of her sickness, she got up and served Jesus and the disciples. 
pretty straightforward uh, gospel narrative coming out of the gospel of Mark. What is interesting about this story is that if you look at the ancient Greek, and first of all, true confessions, I'm not a Greek scholar. I did not even take Greek in seminary, so I rely on secondhand knowledge. My wife, however, uh, took three years of Greek, um, but ask her if she knows any more Greek than I do, and she would probably say no. But I do draw out certain Greek words every once in a while that are significant, and the Greek word that we need to know today is the Greek word diakonio, which simply means to serve. And so when the woman, Simon's mother-in-law, when she was healed of her fever, she immediately got up and the Greek says she went to serve. Now what is interesting about this particular word is that it is used again, the Greek is used again in later on in Mark, Mark 10, 45, if you want to look it up. And it is in that passage that Jesus tells the world that he has been called upon to serve. And it's the same word. Now that's curious to me because if you read the gospel story at face value, what you see is you see this woman among many others in the gospels being healed. And usually when one is healed by Jesus, they get up and they go along their merry way. But today what we have is we have a woman being healed and it says that she went out or went on to serve. Now, in the context of our story today, she went and served the other disciples and she probably served them a meal, which was the tradition of the day, which was probably her lot in life. But it is curious that the gospel writer uses this word diakonia. The what I am struck about in this gospel lesson is that, first of all, it is one of the very first miracles or healings that Jesus does in the, in the gospel of Mark. But the gospel of Mark also, if you read it very closely, it is a gospel in which it tells us that Jesus had an immediacy of his mission, if you will. And so when, when he did things like his healings or when he went and touched people and he worked miracles in their lives, it was always an immediate thing. And, and the gospel tells us that immediately he went on to another thing. It was like the mission needed to happen and happen now. And the healing of the woman with the fever was no different. Now, as I think about that, as I think about the gospel, and as I think about the message that it has for us today, it is this, that when we are touched in some special way, when we, for instance, take for instance those of you that have had the flu, and I know many of you have had the flu this year, and you're shaking your heads, and you know what it's like to go through that. It's, it's almost a... a it's a fate that, it, that I would not wish upon my worst enemy is to have the flu this season. You suffer through it and you don't feel good and you don't want to do anything except maybe lie in bed or sit in your easy chair and watch TV. But then you start coming out of it and you start coming out of, out of the, the shadow or out of your, your flu and you start getting better and you start feeling better and the first thing that you want to do when you get better is that you want to be doing more things you have some enthusiasm for life you have some you have some energy and you want to get out and do things but slow down you need to bridle yourself because you don't want to get the flu again because some people have had a recurrence of it the point being 
that when you've had something like the flu or when you've, ha when you've been sick, you want to get out after you feel better and you want to start doing things. You want to reemerge in life. You want to be about life. You want to be about being part of life again. Listen to what I just said and compare that to the woman who was touched by Jesus. After she was cured of her fever, the first thing that she wanted to do was to go out and serve those in her midst. For you see, she had the enthusiasm again to be out in the world. And not only that, she had the enthusiasm not only of being cured of that fever, but being touched by this man named Jesus. And if we read closely this gospel, what we see is that this woman was changed forever. How much different is that when we come into the presence of the living Christ and his love. How much different is that? When we are touched by the love of Christ in our lives, we are changed forever. We can never go back to what we are. We can only move forward and we can only go forward with a new found hope and a new way of living. And that living comes from being touched by the Christ. This woman was touched forever. And as we read the gospel story, others, more and more people that came into the midst of Jesus were touched by his power and his presence. We too have been touched. And for those that are still seeking, because maybe there are those in this congregation that are seeking, I wish for you, my friends, that touch that that woman experienced from Christ. That loving touch. That touch that will always and everywhere change us forever. Amen, Amen. and amen.